He killed a little girl on Halloween night and destroyed a whole community. What's good guys? Welcome back to Crime Sober Day 7. Y'all, we have made it to seven whole days. I am proud. <laughs> but I thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all who have been following each day for seven whole freaking days. We got, what, eight more days to go because we're doing 15 and... I'm just so excited. This has truly been challenging, but I pushed myself to do this for you guys. I feel like I owe it to you all. Plus, I always wanted to do Crime Tower, but last year was just not good mentally. So I'm super excited to provide this content for you guys and really kick it out. Like I'm feeling so much better mentally. So I appreciate anyone viewing this. So let's get into today's episode. Now today's episode focuses on a nine-year-old girl by the name of Lisa Ann French. Now in this small community of Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, Halloween would change for this community. On this night back in 1973 on Halloween, Lisa Ann French was a nine-year-old girl who wanted to go trick-or-treating. Now, she originally set out to want to be a butterfly, but her mother said, it's very chilly out, so we need to change that costume. So, she ended up changing and she decided to be a hobo. Sadly, Lisa would only go to three doors this Halloween night before her life would end. And this is... And this is so crazy because it really makes you think about how Halloween has evolved over the years. Now, although this case happened in 1973, if you look around, Halloween is very different. I know for me as a parent, I'm a little bit like we're going to drive around to people's homes. You know, like I feel like Halloween has changed since I was a kid back in the 90s. So I can only imagine the fear of this community back in 1973. Now, Lisa was supposed to be going out with her best friend to the community where they were having like a Halloween festival. Like, I don't know if your communities do that, but a lot of places hold like, you know, like trunk or treats. Well, it's kind of very similar to what they were doing, which was like a block over from where Lisa had lived. But sadly, her best friend got into some trouble and was not allowed to go trick-or-treating or to these Halloween festivities. So that left Lisa to go trick-or-treating alone. And as I was reading this case, I always just overanalyze as a parent. I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm a, I'm a scaredy cat when it comes to my kids, but I didn't understand why she went trick-or-treating by herself. So Lisa dresses a hobo, dressed to the nine, has her little freckles on, her jeans, the hobo outfit is all suited. Lisa is going trick-or-treating. She went to the first two doors and she this community was very knit tight, so everyone knew everyone. And when she got to the third door, she knew this man by the name of Gerard Turner, who was 25 years of age. She knew Gerard because he had previously rented the other side of their family's duplex, but he had recently moved out with his girlfriend. And it was kind of like Lisa would always see him and his girlfriend with their baby. So he knew Lisa. We, had, uh, we lived in a, a duplex and he had rented from us. And uh, so I only knew him four months, you know, because I moved there in January. I'd lived there since January and he moved out in June. And I didn't really know him. I just say hi, you know, going out to the parking lot. Or, and my daughter knew his girlfriend's little girl because she'd sit and play with her on the porch. So when Lisa gets to his house, some way, somehow, Lisa is ended up inside the home. And this is when Lisa would never return outside of that house. So during all of this, Lisa is raped and she ends up dying due to asphyxiation. Now, it had been stated in reports that Gerard's girlfriend ends up coming back home because obviously Gerard was supposed to go to his girlfriend's mother's house, but he ended up staying back behind because he had stated that he wasn't feeling well. So, unreluctant to her, you know, is nothing uh, out of the ordinary. He stays home and this is when he ends up seeing Lisa because of course she comes to trick or treat. The crazy thing about this is a year before the death of Lisa, 
Gerard had been charged with statutory rape of a 15 year old babysitter but nothing had ever came of it and then later it had been stated like his ex-wives had stated that he beat them and raped them as well and of course this was back in the times where there wasn't really a sex registry so you know how when Halloween appears you know the media or sometimes people the local law enforcement will discuss like um of not necessarily avoiding areas but to be on guard due to you know a lot of predators in the area well sadly this would lead to the death of lisa so after his girlfriend returns home she leaves back out he ends up trying to discard the body so he ends up putting the lifeless body of lisa into a garbage bag along with her belongings and he takes her body outside of the community roughly about eight miles away and it would take probably four days for her body to be found it had been stated that a farmer driving on his tractor had seen the two garbage bags and ended up finding this and that's like mind blowing like could you imagine if the tractor would have ran over it or whatever the case is but so many people before her body had been discovered had searched for lisa the community had really came together to find her but sadly they would find that lisa was in fact deceased and i can't even imagine the horror that it placed upon this community because Halloween is supposed to be, you know, a night of just fun. People get to dress up and you just really get to have a really good time to take your mind off, you know, all the worries that life typically gives you. You know, you can be who you want to be on Halloween. So law enforcement had suspected Gerard Turner, but they didn't have any evidence to officially charge him. So nine months later is when they were able to charge gerard for the killing of lisa and on august 8th 1974 gerard had confessed to killing lisa and he also tells law enforcement he got tired of being harassed by the police like dude what confession he tells law enforcement that he was highly sexually motivated and when lisa entered his home that's when he closed the door and took her took her upstairs to his bedroom and as he's raping her he pretty much sees that she is not breathing he tried to revive her and that's when his girlfriend returned home and placed socks on his hands and ended up moving lisa's lifeless body to the bathroom what's so sad is medical examiners had ruled that she died from asphyxiation mainly because of the shock like can you imagine the terror that this poor little girl went through nine years old being raped by a 25 year old grown man like seriously during his incarceration it had been written that he wrote a letter to lisa and in this letter it wasn't i guess it wasn't found until like 1999 and he basically states that he will have to live with what he did you know and how when lisa first seen him you know how like you're, you recognize someone so you feel like a sense of security but then that sense of security goes into fear when you realize that this is what this person is intending to do to you and it i and i just think back on that like i can picture the fear in her face you enter someone's home that you think you know you know you've been around and now all of a sudden you're fearful because this person that you thought you could trust even at nine is not someone that you could trust so he was pardoned for good behavior in 1992 this was after serving only 17 years and eight months i really believe that the psychologist psychiatrist who's ever giving him his evaluation should read those i really believe that my heart that he should read some of those comments so in 1994, it was blocked because they wanted to send him to a mental place. And so he went back on trial and then he was released. He ended up disregarding his parole. He wasn't supposed to be looking at anything pornographic or none of that. So he's back in jail for 15 more years and then on February 1st of 2018, his release date is coming up again, of course. A lot of petitions were signed to get him to stay in prison or to go to a mental facility and 
that is currently where he is as of now from what I have read. Um, I think it's truly a shame that they wanna, wanted to let this predator out and that they thought that that was okay, it's not. That is the story of Lisa Ann French. She was nine years old when her life ended on Halloween of 1973, a day that we celebrate just to be ourselves, release all our creativity, and it would change the way this small community in Wisconsin would ever be again. That is today's episode, guys. I'll see you tomorrow on day eight. As always, stay safe and sending you all love out there because this is definitely a heavy story and it's truly sad. Keep your children safe. Please go with them trick-or-treating if you decide to do so because this world is crazy and you just can never be too, too sure. As you can see in this case, someone that this family trusted and knew, even rented out of a home for him. Bye guys, see you tomorrow. We were not allowed to go trick or treating. <laughs> we were not allowed to celebrate Halloween. And when we were kids, it was really hard because we didn't understand. You know, we're like, well, how come all our friends get to do it? You know?